<laughs> look good, talk. <laughs> you just say what you what is the truth. I mean, that's really it. And I, I, I always, I still, to this day, I still get the little nervous butterflies whenever I'm presenting. It doesn't matter if it's at church, here, whatever. I, I still get it, but it's like a good energy. So I get charged up, get to go, come do it. I've heard it never goes away. I, I believe it. <clears throat> I think like the professional speakers and stuff, they must like really know how to control it. I just, you know, I don't know. I just like to go in and have fun. You got to have fun with it. And you have to, in my opinion, you have to talk about something you know. If you know this stuff, it's like, uh, you can ask me whatever. I mean, that's what I do every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, so we, we get to help a lot of clients with this stuff. And, um, when I was, whenever I'm on coaching calls, people are like, well, Nate, Hey, don't you have an agenda? Don't you have this? I'm like, <laughs> no, I, like, I just, I talk about what I'm doing that day and then questions start rolling. And then I just start answering them. Like, I just, I just talk about what we're doing. That's all. It's so much easier if you just be who you are, do what you do. It's so easier, man. Yeah. Agreed. Brown how's that? Up. How's your new house coming? I was a little nervous today. Nobody was there when I went by. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> but I did see a passing inspection on the root on the attic insulations dated for the day Ooh, something so, happened progress yeah they, i guess they I, when they blow it i didn't know you, you can't obviously you can't but i didn't think that the wall insulation goes in you pass and then attic insulations is r38 i didn't know that there was two you know you just don't think about it ah. So they have to put it in because it, it's not going to go in because the sheetrock isn't there to hold it up. You can't just, you can't put it in. Uh, <laughs> so, like nobody's doing nothing. I've crawled up in the attic. I see this, they have this little meter thing and it shows how many inches it is and it says, has a check mark there. So I feel good. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't know insulation. I got, I got pinched once on uh, fire caulking. Oh well, yeah, going through floors, you gotta have that. I didn't I didn't know what that I, I, I like I had no idea what fire caulking was. It's red, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I and I technically I was told later by another guy that I probably didn't have to have that, but um it's because I I didn't get along very well with one inspector. He tried to oh, make yeah. us do something extra on the framing, and I'm like, well, hold on, like that's not code, it's not in the plans, our plans are approved, and apparently inspectors talk and then he told the next one so the next one was twice as hard on me like oh okay yeah they supersede plans now now i just learned to bite my tongue and just let let the contractors do what they're supposed to do yeah, be, quiet, <laughs> yes. be quiet Nate. quiet they'll bait you in though they'll start talking 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 and then you're like well, i don't know <laughs> yeah so Good evening, Roundup Homies. We got 40 people on here. It is so good to see you this beautiful evening, January 9th, as we get rocking for uh, for the 2023. Nate, you had a good December. You tell me every time I talk to this guy, I tell you, Nate, he seems, he's like a real laid back, kind of toned down type of guy. But I'll tell you, this man is a boss. All right. So tonight, every time I talk to Nate, I learn something, even just with his lifestyle, the way he serves, family, all this stuff. And you can learn something too, just from listening to it. I love hanging out with people that are smarter than me, richer than me, have more real estate, been around. So this is the time that I get to share my friends with you. Nate Armstrong, what's going on, homie? Hey, Chris. Hey, I so appreciate you. you making making time for me to come and hang out, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. It's going to be good stuff tonight. So I am Chris Haskins. I'm going to be your co-pilot tonight. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. And this year is going to be crazy. We've got a whole podcast coming. You see in my house. We've got a whole video studio coming. Tonight, we're focusing on real estate. One of my loves. I love real estate. Don't like it. Love it. Don't like it. It's just a love. You got, uh, it is a necessary evil, in my opinion. Nate, do you? how do you feel about real estate? Do you? I mean, is it like a love-hate thing for you, too? Or is it like you just love it to, to the bone? 
So um, I love two things to the bone about real estate. Um, I don't like some of the things that we were just talking about, like, you know, sometimes challenges come up with contractors and whatever. But yeah. what I do love is that um, whenever I try to do any kind of work in life, I love getting paid for life. Mm. And there's very few like types of work out there where you get paid forever. You do yeah. something once, right? And then you get paid forever. Yeah. My dad was a mechanic. So like that never happened for him. He traded time for money always. Mm. And the, the second thing that, that I like about it is that the tax advantages are through the roof. Like mm. how many here heard about like uh, the former president, Donald Trump, didn't pay taxes for like 10 years, they say. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't gone through his tax returns yet. I have gone through Joe Biden's. I have gone through Kamala Harris's. But wow, there, there's reasons, there's tax codes that incentivize us to go out there and find real estate and develop real estate and do stuff with it. So mm -hmm. that's the two things that I, that I love about it. Get paid for life. And then there's tax tax incentives. Big ones. Something, something, brother. Yeah, it's amazing. Truly mm -hmm. amazing. I love real estate. Can't live without it. But sometimes it can really, really be a little challenging, like that little knife, just turning right there. Tenants totally trash, dealing with all those crazy stuff, inspectors and all that stuff. Yeah, it's part so, of it. Yeah, part, of part of it. Part of wealth management, right? Wealth management. You got to deal with it. So get your questions in for Nate. He's going to be going over something uh, truly amazing, locating real estate, how to buy, real, getting paid to upfront to buy real estate. Nate, what crazy stuff you got going on, man? As usual, most people, the, the trailblazers always do things that are right on the edge. So we're, we're going to talk about um, getting paid up front to own rentals. It's something, and I know that that concept, it probably sounds too good to be true. And um, believe me, I was a skeptic when I first heard about getting paid up front to buy rentals, but it works. Ah, the credit cousin. Nice. Uh, Bring them in. It works. It works really well. And I apologize for the green halo that I have going on here. I'm in my home office right now. We just got done doing birthday cake and all that kind of stuff. So Whose birthday is it? It's my birthday today. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Got to. I get to hang with you on my birthday, man. Birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So my, Happy my birthday, Nate. My wife and my boys, they took me to the zoo yesterday. And then today we had neighbors over and did the whole birthday cake thing. And so here Look at this. I get to do a virtual broadcast tonight. You're uh, working on your birthday. I'm having fun on my birthday. So That's true. Um, That's true. it's it's a little different. Like, you know, like so so my dad from northern Minnesota, mm -hmm. like I helped my dad as a kid in the garage working on mm -hmm. stuff. And so like that was work to me. Like you get your hands dirty and greasy. And now like I go look at pieces of real estate and I negotiate stuff and, and I buy stuff and I get paid. And like, I, it's just a different kind of work. So like, I love what I do. That is a different kind of work. Well, happy birthday. May you be blessed with many, many more healthy years, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, man. Look Thank at you. this. Everybody saying happy birthday, Chris. Birthday cake. Andre, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. B.L. Wharton. So it's, it's my birthday desire for everybody here that, that I can actually serve. I want to like show up big time and, and show you something that I wish someone would have taught me 20 years ago. And so the, the main focal point that I want to hit, Chris, <laughs> is we'll talk a little bit about finding deals, good off-market stuff. But the real main one is making sure that people understand that there's a way to get paid up front to buy real estate. Sweet. Let's do it. You want me to bring you in on the, on the slide, Nate? Or you, cool. You just talk? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So as Chris said, if you've got like questions and stuff, as we go, you feel free to use that, that question bar. We're hanging out, we're live. So uh, I'm happy to go through anything as deep as you guys want to go. Yep. And as we get into this too, it's going to help me to know how deep to go. Let us know in the comments. If you're new to real estate investing, type the word new. If you've yeah. done some deals, tell us how many deals you've done. That'll, that'll help us to know how deep we should go. So yeah, if you're new, really type good. new. If you've been doing this for a while, tell us about how many units you've done. Then I'll, we'll know exactly what level to cover the scope on this. Okay? Good idea. Good idea. Wazam, Chris. <laughs> nice. Nice. So you guys let us know. Okay. So I'm going to skip like my background, my bio, uh, in case you're like curious to know a little bit, you can Google search us later. My bio is not important. I want to make sure we deliver for you, but you can Google search Home Invest. I had the blessing and privilege of co-founding that company. We've won some pretty cool awards with that business, Home Invest. Um, but the the real thing is that I'm not that smart. I'm not like some prodigy or genius. 
what I figured out early on though, is how to surround myself with really smart people. And so um, my ACT score, as an example, uh, was the average for the state of Minnesota, the average. And so I hung out with people in high school. And then when I went to uh, college that were smarter than me, and they, I just kept learning from them what they were doing, what their parents were doing. And um, that led me to the spot where I've literally been blessed to be able to do millions of dollars worth of real estate deals. But it was all because of having a really good like support network and team around me. Okay. Um, I jumped in then after I got up and running in this business, I jumped in and I did a big development project. I co-signed a loan for a really big developer in Chicago. I'm not from Chicago, but the project looked amazing. And that developer ended up walking away from it about six months in. And so at the time I was a brand new dad, brand new husband, uh, scared <laughs> out of my mind because this project was failing right in front of me and um, I didn't know what to do. So I had to rebuild really quick. And so um, that this is the journey that I went on to, to figure this out, how to get paid up front to do this stuff, okay? I did some wholesaling. Chris, you ever done wholesaling? Yeah, I do. I still do it sometimes, yeah. Yeah, and, and wholesaling can be good. What, what I learned really quick, though, is that it's like you're running on the hamster wheel, and the minute you get paid, you have to get back on the hamster wheel. Yep. And so for me, like, it just wasn't going to do it fast enough. And... Um, um, then I tried to get into fix and flips, but because of that crash development project, I just didn't have enough cash to like float some of the stuff. And um, then I tried to get into short-term rentals, short-term rentals. It was again, the 20% down payment plus furnishing them. It was just a little bit too much. So for me, I was looking for um, the vehicle that I'm about to show you. And I found it from someone and he called it uh, SLP. Okay. It stands for selecting a property, finding a loan, and finding a partner, a silent partner. And I'm going to map out all of that. And it literally was a total blessing from God and it was good people around me. But we, we got to go from, I had $19,600 left in my, my bank account to the point where we did a little bit over a million bucks in a year. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was total, total lift. And, and this is how it works. Okay. So um, this property right here, this is um, a property that I bought probably two and a half, maybe three months ago. Uh, West 22798 State Highway 64 in Medford. This is a four unit building, beautiful little property. And what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to use this property and I'll use a couple other ones just to show you how this works so that you can go out there and replicate this stuff. Okay. So um, th this property right here, the day that I bought it, the day that I closed on it, I had about a thousand dollars out of pocket. Okay. I paid $500 to an inspector and I put up about $500 earnest money deposit. The day we closed on it, I was reimbursed the earnest money and I was reimbursed the inspection fee. And I got a wire back to my bank account from the investor that partnered on this thing for $20,000. Okay. So I got paid to buy this property. Wow. Now we collect about $3,100 per month. We've got taxes, mortgage, stuff like that. We take that money out and then whatever's left over, which is usually about five to $700 per month, I split it with the investor and that's the arrangement for life. As long as we own this asset. Okay. So what, that, what kind of asset is that? They, it looks like a multi, is that another unit upstairs or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got a, a lower, it's got two on the main and then it's got an upstairs, but it's really small. And then mm. it's got, um, it's got a couple down below. So it's just gotcha. a little old four unit building. Okay. Yeah. Nothing fancy, nothing at all. I'll, I'll show you like we just closed on a 38 unit building not that long ago. Uh, we closed on one that was close to 80 doors uh, about six weeks ago. I'll show some of those, but I, I want to like, really drive this home for people so you can see, like, you don't have to go tackle the big ones. You can if you yeah. want to, but um, yeah, I didn't make this stuff. I didn't create this. The The guy I want to give credit to is his name is Bob Lux. He's a developer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Some of the biggest projects in the um, in the city of Minneapolis are done by this guy. If you have ever seen a Minnesota Timberwolves game, or a Minnesota Twins game, that those stadiums, they're built right next to a section of downtown called Block E, okay? Block E, when I was working <laughs> with Bob, this is back in 2010, uh, Block E was purchased by Bob. The guy that sold it to Bob, he had just paid $130 million to develop Block E, like $130 million. And so Bob bought this thing, and I'm talking with Bob, 
And, and I'm like, Bob, how, how on earth did you come up with the down payment? How did you come up with 20, 25, $30 million as down payment? And, and, and how are you going to fund like your carrying costs? And I'm asking all these questions. And Bob's like, Nate, it, oh, hold, hold, hold on. He's like, that's not how these projects work. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, actually, Nate, the day that I closed on block E, I got paid $2 million. I'm like, what? On closing day? How did you get paid on closing day? He's like, yeah, Nate, I'll get paid now from the rental income we're deriving from it. I'll get paid for the rest of my life as long as we own and control that asset. And I'm like, please tell me how on earth it, up to this point in my career, I had been running around borrowing hard money, which I, I don't recommend to get into, but borrowing hard money and doing a whole bunch of other stuff to like try to make deals happen. And Bob is across the table from me telling me, I just got paid $2 million to close on this piece of real estate. And I'm like, please show me, show me this stuff. And so then he maps it out for me. It's SLP. If you're taking notes, uh, write this down. If you're not taking notes, I really encourage you to participate in the comment section, like type this stuff out because study after study shows that when you engage, when you write stuff down, you'll remember it more later. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that I want from you guys is to like, to forget this stuff in a week, because this is probably the most profound piece of real estate knowledge I've ever been taught by far. Okay. S stands for select a property. Pretty straightforward. You find a killer deal, a really good one. The kind that Chris teaches you how to find. Okay. L stands for leverage. That's just a fancy word for finding a bank loan. Okay. And then P stands for partner. I want to call that person a silent partner, someone that just wants to come in and contribute their cash and just make a return. They don't want to do what you, Chris, and I do. They don't want to have anything to do with that. They just want to put money in and make a passive return. Okay. You get these three ingredients and then you start doing deals like Bob Lux is doing in downtown Minneapolis. Maybe not to the size right off the bat, but this is the formula. So, so Bob teaches me this and I'm like excited as all can be. And I'm like, I'm going to go copy this. Like this guy's doing this stuff without spending his own money and making millions. I, I got to go do this. And so I run out and I had never done a multifamily property, a, a commercial building before, never touched one. And so I go out and I'm like, I got to find one. And I go on the hunt. I find one, no track record in apartment buildings. I didn't have assets to my name so that banks, banks wouldn't give me like loans I didn't have credit because I had gone through some the trouble on the development project. Like I had to go find a killer deal. That was the root of this. Okay. I found this killer deal, 1416 Sixth Avenue South in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I bought this one for five hundred thousand dollars with investors that came in on the project. And they paid me on the day of closing 10 grand up front, 10,000 bucks. We um we held on to it for a couple of years, collected rent and all that kind of stuff. And then um, after two years, we turned around and sold it for $1.7 million, okay? Does anyone listening here, let, let us know in the comments. I, I wanna know how deep to go on this, but does a deal like this, is this exciting to you? If you found one for half a million bucks that you could get paid up front on, 10,000 bucks or so, and then hold on to it for a while and then sell it for 1.7, is that the kind of deal that you'd wanna go into? Oh. Yeah, what do you think, there. Chris? That's, 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 that's truly amazing. You know, I'm looking at our chat here. We got new people here. We got people that have six single family homes. Nate, a BL Worthen has eight single families. Ellis yeah. has over 10 rentals. So we got we got A to Z here, brother. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So we can get pretty technical with this group, too. Yeah, we can. Awesome. Yeah. Somebody oh. says, go deep. Diana says, go deep. All right. <laughs> we'll go deep. We're going to go deep. Okay. I'm Let me glad. reintroduce you, Nate. I'm sorry. It's been 20 yeah. people just coming in. and would know who you are. Round yeah. up. Thank you. We got 70 people here tonight. We're, Nate is going over a strategy that I, I'm not familiar with. So I'm, I'm learning. I get to introduce you to the people that I know. Nate is a boss. He does this full time. Been around doing the game for many, many years. Came through the crash just like I did. And here we are trying to uh, give you the information that Nate has learned how to do this partner stuff and get paid to buy rental properties. Thanks for hanging out with me, Nate. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So just high level recaps. So anybody that just joined can get this. Um, uh, uh, this guy taught me how to do this named Bob Lux. He was buying the big downtown Minneapolis stuff. And I learned it, went out and found this building for 500,000 bucks, had investors come in on it with me and they paid me on the day of closing 10 grand. 
And then we held on to it for two years and then resold it for 1.7 million bucks. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Now there's there's still questions to answer, like how do you find them? How do you fund these? How do you lease them? <laughs> we'll cover all those things, but please understand that there are deals like this everywhere if you know where to look and how to look. Okay. You have to know what to say specifically to the people that control them or own them. But this method that I'm showing you right now, if you could put me back in time 20 years ago and, and get me restarted in real estate, this is the only thing that I would do. This is the only thing that I do right now. This mm -hmm. is the method that, that I would take to the bank forever. Okay. Cool. Uh, next, um, I showed this to these guys. This is Ryan Hill and his brother, Austin Hill, and their two lovely brides. And when they first came to me, they were buying rentals the traditional way. They were saving up down payments and then living off of a little bit of cash flow. And they both were stuck working full-time jobs. They just couldn't break the full barrier to full-time real estate. And I showed them how to do this. And um, first it was Ryan that was able to break free from his job. And then Austin shortly after, he left a job as an engineer to get into full-time full real estate because they learned how to get paid up front to buy these things. Mm -hmm. Now, I emphasize that because a lot of people, they think in their, their mind when they get into real estate that they have to do this out of their own bank account. And um, it's just simply wrong. You don't have to. Uh, Steve Jobs founded Apple out of his garage, but it didn't grow to a billion dollar company out of his garage. It grew to a billion dollar company because he had outside investment capital that met him in his garage and funded it. And so I just want everyone to know that. And with real estate, it's probably the easiest thing to get funding for. A startup company like Apple is actually a lot harder to get money for, but real estate, so, so, so easy. And I like, my credit was very challenged when I learned this model. And so I had to, to figure out creative ways to get financing, like bank loans, investors, all that kind of stuff. And um, I heard from a friend that this company that's on your screen right now called Wilshire Finance Partners, I heard that they were lending money in the state of Minnesota, my original birth state, and um, they needed somebody to go clean up some projects that they had already uh, lent money on. And so I reached out to them and I'm like, hey, I heard you guys got some projects up here that you need help with. <clears throat> I think I can help you. Uh, and all I'd ask in return is that you, you, you loan on my projects. And um, next thing I know, I was in a meeting with um, Thomas O'Brien, one of the fund managers. I Google searched this guy before I went to the meeting. He's a big deal. Like he was uh, literally an advisor to the Reagan administration in economics. God, super smart guy. And I, and I, and I take uh, an elevator up to go meet him. It's one of those elevators that stops on like the penthouse floor. I'd never been in a penthouse in my life. My, my dad was a mechanic. Like I just... It was over my head, but I walked in the meeting and, um, and I just, I was totally honest with them, just spit it all on the table. I'm like, Hey, I know how to fix these properties. I do. Uh, but I don't have any credit and I don't have any cash, but I promise you I'll fix your properties. And if you guys will keep lending to me, then, then I'll be your best, best client ever. And he's like, Nate, calm down, man. Calm down. Uh, I understand that you're good at what you do and, uh, no problem on the credit, no problem on, on, uh, not having assets. We'll lend you as much money as you want. All that I want to make sure is that you've got 20% down, 20% down, which I'll talk about how to get that in a minute. Okay. You got to have 20% down and the deal has to be good. I don't care what your credit is. I don't care about your assets. The deal just has to be a good deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. All right. <clears throat> I walk out of that meeting within two days. I get this proof of funds letter, unlimited funding. I just had to follow his rules. Okay. 20% down. And um, it had to be a really, really good deal. That was it. Now, so everybody knows, and I know that Chris knows this, but so everybody knows like, it's really easy to get funding like this now, as long as you find a killer deal. There yeah. are hundreds of lenders now just like this. Okay, Money follows the deal. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't know at the time, I, but I, I was like ecstatic. I got this proof of funds letter. Let's go. And um, uh, on top of the world. And so I start going out. And um, going after a big time. And this is like, because I had that confidence mentally that I had money behind me. Um, I'll talk more about how to get the rest of the money in, in a little bit here. But like, that was my first big break in my mentally for me. And then my next big one came from a hedge fund manager out of the state of Minnesota. He ran a small fund, I don't know, probably around 50, 40 or 50 million now, but at the time it was a little bit smaller. And um, uh, I had asked him, 
His name's Ian. I said, Hey, Ian, uh, I heard you're looking to partner with people and buy properties. Would you be interested in doing deals with me? And he said, Hey, let me come look at what you're doing. He came and looked and, um, and then we ended up partnering together. And, um, this guy deployed probably 2 million bucks the very first month that I met him. And then the second month that I met him, he deployed around $5 million. And then, um, he came to town and he wanted to go and meet the flooring guys for breakfast. He wanted to meet the leasing guys for lunch. He wanted to meet the property manager for dinner and he wanted to meet the, the carpenters the next day. And like, he had this plan of meeting people. And so I stopped them on day two and I'm like, Hey, Ian, like, I, I love that you want to meet everybody and all that kind of stuff. But I just have to understand like most investors, when they come to town and look at properties, and whatnot, they come look at properties and they're on the next plane out. What's with you wanting to meet everybody. And he taught me this really important rule. Okay. This is really going to apply for a lot of you that maybe you're in a market right now that is tough to get deals, or maybe you're in a place where you're trying to do everything yourself. Uh, Ian said to me, he said, Nate, real estate is about people, yeah. people, it's a people business. Yeah. He said, Nate, you could get me a, a, a $5,000 house in Milwaukee, but that doesn't mean it's a good deal. That might be a bad deal. It might be a terrible deal because if I can't get somebody to fix it, if I can't get somebody to, to manage it and some good people to pay rent, then that house is worthless to me. It's a liability to me. And so it's all about the people. Yeah. I took notes that day, like no other mentally. I locked it in a little bit. It's really what let me go from being like a local person to doing it in other cities. And um, eventually we expanded to the point where we got to seven different cities and we're running crews in a lot of places. And, and it was really because of Ian. And I, I just want to like plant that seed for anybody. I don't know who needs to hear that right now, but um, you don't have to do all of this stuff yourself. There are really good people. Um, even like getting into contracting, Chris and I were just chatting a little bit about his personal home that he's building right now. And um, Chris is the G he's not the GC, but he's there all the time checking on stuff. And um, when you get into investment properties like this, just know that you can hire professionals to help you. You don't have to go at this all by yourself. You can get a property manager that can then look over the contractors. Like there's, there's ways to do that. And so that's what I really learned from Ian. And it, let me, it? it is. You know, I, you know, Nate. Let me cut. I'm gonna, let you, I'm, yeah. not, I'm gonna cut you off. But Ron Legrand taught me that there, there. The, I, I didn't even know this. He was like, Chris, do you know that there are people that are do this better than you? I'm like, you know, and it's like when they told me that, I'm like, you know what? I'm really not that great. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's sobering to know that you know you're just a human. Yeah. I'm like the people that we hire. They're literally better than us at what they do. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so true. Leave it to Ron to just be blunt like that. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So, so yeah, let that be a, a freeing thing. Learn that from Chris. Okay. Um, on your screen right now, this is Andrea and her, uh, her husband, Chip and her son. Andrea came to me back in 2012. She bought this property from me, came in with all cash, paid full market value for it. And she was just kind of a rare breed to like come in and buy a full cash. And then she wanted another one the next month and another one the next month. And like every single month since I started to like really get to know her, she was buying properties. If not for me, then from somebody else, like constantly. And I asked her one day, I'm like, how are you doing this? And she said, I'm, I'm following this SLP model. And I'm like, really? Like, what are you doing? And then she told me, she's like, Nate, I spend all of my time focusing on just meeting with people that have cash that want to invest passively so then I can come buy properties like this. And I'm like, and you can just pay full market value and not have to get in the weeds with any of the contractors or anything. She's like, yeah, that's what I can do. And um, in case you're wondering like how that turned out for her, Zillow says that this house is worth like 210,000. Zillow is not the be all end all of valuation, but it'll give us a ballpark. Yeah. She got this one, I'm going to tax records now. She got this one for 75,000. At the time that was top of the market prices. Now, I know um, there's two reasons for it. We can call it appreciation. That's reason number one. Reason number two, we can also look at the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Um, starting since 1913, when the Fed was established, I won't get into a political talk on this, but when the Fed was established, we've had our money devalued. The more that our government prints money, the less each dollar becomes worth. That's just kind of what happens. 
In fact, if you go back to the, um, uh, the passing of Jesus Christ, there had been over 400 currencies in that timetable. Okay. In that timetable of 400 currencies, guess how many currencies are left? No, I would say none. Yeah. That'd be a good guess. About half. Hey, oh, okay. Sure. About half. So, so 50% of them just went away. Now I'm not saying that like the U S dollar is going to go away tomorrow. Cause I don't think that, but you can just look at this graph. Like it's, it's the, the writings on the wall. So what that means for us is we have to find assets that will go up in value over time. We have to find assets that are hard assets that preferably pay us dividends or rental checks every single month. That's the only way to fight. Like you can't just hold on to cash under your mattress. It becomes worthless. Mm -hmm. And so going back to, um, to Andrea, this lady's smart. She's super savvy. She's buying apartment buildings and stuff the same way. Single family houses. She's just bringing in investor capital and buying them, buying them, buying them, even if she has to pay a full market price for them. Now, there are ways to get below the market price, which we're going to talk about, um, but she was buying at full price and she's still making a killing. Okay. That leads us to the next part, which is finding killer deals. Okay. I don't want, um, I, I've tried these methods. I've tried cold calling. I've tried realtors. I've tried signs. I've pr tried pretty much every method under the sun to get deals. And um, what I don't like about cold calling specifically is that cold calling, what you're doing is you're reaching out to someone. You're doing this out, out, out and asking them to work with you. And um, that method just doesn't work as well. And I know it's cheap and you can buy lists for nothing and whatever, but I've seen more people quit the business from cold calling than anything else because of rejection. It's constant rejection. What I'd rather see happen is just turn the, the table around. Let the seller come directly to you. Let the seller ask you for your help. When you got them asking you for your help, <clears throat> Now you got an equation where you can actually start to work a deal. And so um, uh, going out with realtors, I love realtors to death, um, but there's a, a best time and a best place for realtors. Selling properties with realtors is fantastic. Buying right now, I would hold until the market has more inventory. Okay. Every once in a while you can squeeze a good deal, but like going direct to sellers way better. And I'll talk about what we're doing right now too. Okay. So what are we doing? I just got this 38 unit building. It's got uh, two duplexes and it's got uh, 34 units on the, the, on the same parcel of land. And this was from off-market social media is what brought this together. Off-market social media. Or this one, 9194 North 94th Street. This is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, by the way, let me know in the chat because this one's really interesting. Who here would like to get an interest rate on properties in today's market of 4%? Would an interest rate of 4% be, be something worth talking about for you? I'm put that in for me too. You want 4%? Yeah, I'm good with that too. <laughs> yeah. You like 4%? Okay, cool. Cool. Crypto Q says 4% I'm in. Awesome. I'd like 4%. Okay. Roxanne, Crystalline. Yeah. Awesome. You should want 4%. Actually, that's like where deals are being created right now in this market. While interest rates are super high, you can create incredible deals this way, okay? So this particular property, he came in from one of our Facebook ads. I remember the seller. I don't always go in person. I, I rarely go in person now. Usually it's all by phone, but this one I did go in person. And I remember pulling up to the front of the house in my white Jeep. My son's in the back seat. I got my eight-year-old boy. He comes with me on these appointments. And usually in the car, I say a quick prayer, I get my head straight, and then I go in. But this one I couldn't because the seller was literally standing on the front porch with his arms crossed, staring out at me in the Jeep. And so I looked at my son in the back and I'm like, Bianco, we just, we just got to go in. Come on, bud, let's go. And so we hop out of the Jeep and I walk up to the front door. I reach my hand out to shake his hand and he didn't shake my hand. And that's kind of cold. And I'm like, his name's Kong, K-O-N-G. I'm like, hey, Kong, um, hey, just so you know, Sometimes these deals work. Sometimes they don't. If you, for whatever reason, and I don't like figure out that this is a good fit, I can probably still refer you a good buyer for this property. Would that be cool with you if we just spend some time, get to know one another, look at the property. And then if I'm not the right fit, I refer somebody to you. And he looks at me kind of puzzled and he's like, so you'd refer somebody to me? 
And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, I don't want to force a deal. Like if it's a good deal for you and a good deal for me, cool, we'll do it. But if, if not, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll refer somebody to you. And he uncrosses his arm, reaches out and shakes my hand. Hmm. We walk the property, we go inside, I meet his wife, I meet his three daughters. We spend 47 minutes, we're talking and uh, at his dining room table, he reveals to me, he's, he said, Nate, I already had an investor out here. They offered me a low ball cash offer. Couldn't take it. It would have left me with nothing after paying the mortgage. I had a realtor out here. Realtor said that they'd list it, but I have to do a bunch of repairs. I'm like, okay, well, what are you really looking for here? Like, what, what do you need out of this? What's the goal for you? And he said, Nate, I lost my job here. I got a new job in a different city, but I got to pack up my family and I got to be there within two weeks. I don't have time for any of the other stuff. I just got to be to the new job. I'm like, okay, so what do you need to make that happen? He said, I need seven grand. I need $7,000 so I can pack up the family and go. And I said, okay, well, Kong, if, if I can get you the seven grand and I just take over everything that's here, you don't have to think about your payments anymore. You don't have to think about your taxes, the mortgage, anything like that. I just, I'll just take it all over from here. Are you good? And he said, so you'll, you'll take over everything and you'll give me seven grand. And I'm like, yeah, gotcha. He goes and talks to his wife. They speak a different language in front of me. They both turn to me. He reaches out and shakes my hand again. We sign a contract. I took over his property that day. 4% interest rate. This is the interesting part. So I gave him the seven grand. I took over his mortgage, $118,000 mortgage. That doesn't mean that I went to his bank and signed paperwork. All that that means is that I wrote an agreement between my company and him that I was going to pay his mortgage payments from my company. Okay. And uh, his interest rate was at 4%, one of those really good 30 year fixed mortgages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, perfect. I paid the title company 3,000 bucks to record the transfer and the sale, uh, some taxes, things like that. And um, so I'm out of pocket about 10 grand on the deal. Okay. Uh, my broker tells me, Nate, I could sell that property. I could sell it for you. I'd sell it for almost 200 right now. I send my father-in-law to the property and he meets a contractor. They do carpet shampooing, paint touch-ups, and they clean. It just needed a really, really good deep clean. And um, I was going to rent it. I thought, you know what? I should probably rent this. It's such a good mortgage. I, I want this 4% long-term. But the broker kept calling me saying, Nate, I'll sell that thing. I'll sell that thing. And so I said, okay, go ahead, list it for a week before I rent it. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, the, um, the broker sold it the very first day on market. So... When it was all said and done, when this thing closed out, it took me 89 days. That's just shy of three months, 89 days from start to finish, put in 10 grand, got back 45 grand, just like Sweet. that. Sweet. Yeah. So that's off market social media deals. Okay. Mm. Off market. Cool. Um, so interesting, Chris, remember how I told you that I moved to Florida? I see. Yeah. So um, I was told because my, my credit's challenged, I was told by three different brokers in Florida that I would never get a seller finance property uh, that I was looking for. I wanted, uh, my wife wanted to get out of the cold, come to Florida, and um, we wanted to be near or on the water. And um, I, get, I kept getting laughed at by brokers. One of them literally laughed and said, nope, not possible. It's never going to happen. It'll, it'll never come true. For them. And, and I, and I remember thinking to myself that very night, I'm like, you're wrong. And I'm going to quietly prove you wrong. And, um, well, they uh, might not be wrong. They didn't, might just not, not happen for them. I mean, I hear, obviously we hear this every day. People say it never happened to me. That's just how it is in this game. You're right. You're so right. I kept doing my thing. And, um, now the picture with me and my two boys, it's in front of our building and, um, we got this seller financed we and, um, Seller, seller was good. I'm, I have lunch with the seller now to this day, now going on a year of in the relationship. Um, yeah. If you ever, I, I share this because if you ever hear people tell you that you're nuts, you're crazy, uh, it might even be your mom, your brother, your coworker, and they're saying, hey, real estate, oh, I don't know about that. Just listen to you. Listen to your gut. Hang out with people like Chris. Get your, get your mind around people that are actually like moving the ball forward and the thing that you want to be good at and ignore the naysayers, ignore the brokers that laugh at you and say to yourself, you're wrong. And I'm going to quietly prove you wrong. I love okay. That. 
So um, I think, I think, I mean, people that are hanging out with us this long, I think that you're here because you know that you, you were meant for more. Right. Yeah, you're right. They know it. Let me reintroduce you, Nate, with 40 minutes. 75 people here. Round up homies. We're here with Nate Armstrong. Just dropping some knowledge and wisdom, wisdom on us tonight. Uh, how he's doing these deals. Some of this stuff he's doing partnerships. Looks like he looks like he's doing some creative financing. Nate, you got a couple of strategies going on here, looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. We'll take so that that financing part, we're taking more and more creative now because interest rates have gotten so high. Yeah. The one common thread is that these silent partners. Mm-hmm bringing them in. We figured out how to get them all from social media. So that, that one we're doing like clockwork every time. Okay. Cool. And Mike was asking if this is a unicorn type situation. And um, Mike, if you're not generating consistent leads for sellers and for investors, then it would seem like a unicorn. But if you got consistent leads coming in every day, I mean, you got like two or three deals to look at every single day on your desk then uh, uh, I would say it like this, the unicorns come once a week. So, yeah. I think that's the answer to all a lot of our issues in real estate. Now, when people say they don't have a deal or whatever, I just look at how many deals you're looking at, man. And I have to remind myself too, if I don't have something closing that day or for that week, I'll, I'll always rewind like Chris, how many deals did you look at? So true. How many deals you look at? How many offers did you make? How many offers did you make? Yeah. So we, we track those, like a lot of people don't um, measure what they need. Like I go to the gym every day and like when I'm trying to cut pounds, I step on that scale and I track it. And then I like, I know it's constantly in my head, but the average real estate investor doesn't track it like that. And you, you, you really ought to like track. Am I actually looking at five, five opportunities per week? Did I make an offer on at least two opportunities per week? And your number might be different than, than the numbers that I just described, but you always have to do that. You got to treat this business like a business. That's right. Got it right. Cool. Okay. Um, how many, let me know in the chat guys, I, I got more stuff that I want to cover. I want to cover this tax strategy. That's like wicked cool. Um, but let me know in the chat. Um, does this system, how many here know that by continuing to learn a system like this, where you're finding off market deals and you're getting investors to come in and fund the gap for you. How many of you know that this could have a good effect on your life? Mm -hmm. Let me know that in the chat. And, and how many of you know that using a system like this would make a difference for you? Yeah. Cool. I know this stuff works. Great, absolutely here. Mike P, ACs. Yeah. What's up, Greg? So we're going to, we're going to keep training here, but, um, would it make sense to you that we can't cram in a, an hour session? We can't cram 15 plus years worth of knowledge in 1400 plus real estate deals. <laughs> that might be a trick question. How many know that it would take a little more time to pull out all of the goodness or maybe even work in like a small group or one-on-one -on -one to get that change that you really want. Yeah. He says, yeah, hundred percent. Katie, Crystal, cool, cool. Well, would it be cool with you guys and would it be cool with you, Chris, if I shared what it would be like to spend three half days with my team and I, as we really unpack this strategy? Would that be cool with you guys? Yeah, man. I think it'd be cool. That cool roundup. Would you guys like to hang out with Nate for three days? You're on Eastern Standard now, by the way. So, yeah, we're Eastern. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's please do. Okay. Awesome. Theodore, I don't know. All right, Theodore, you got to know here, man. We got to make a decision here, brother. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mr. Elizabeth says yes. Miss Maria, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Cool. Hi, Katie. Hi, Miss Maria. Okay. Then, then I'm going to extend the formal invite. So uh, today is my birthday. We're doing something kind of fun for this. That's um, crazy. We, we got a cash flow event in two days. Okay. Uh, the way it works is this it's our three day cash flow intensive. It's all 100% on Zoom. You don't have to travel anywhere or anything like that. 
Um, so it's all 100% online. You can just click on your phone or click on your tablet or your computer. It starts Wednesday. It's a half day Wednesday. So it starts at 12 o'clock Eastern time. It'll run to about five o'clock Eastern time. If you happen to be over in the Pacific coast, it would start at nine o'clock your time and it would go till about midday your time or mid afternoon. And these are intentionally done as half days because we want you to still be able to do like your normal thing that you do during the day and then just come hang with us the other half of the day. Day one, and by the way, all of these are recorded too. Okay, I'll talk about the specifics and stuff in a second, but they're all recorded. So if you can't like attend every session, that's okay. Just come for what you can. The, the more that you're able to come, the more you'll be able to ask questions. We're on Zoom. So like you'll literally be able to talk with us on camera back and forth. Um, and then you get the replays so you can come back to them and catch up on anything that you miss later. Again, you don't have to travel at all because we're on Zoom for this. And I have only got room for around maybe 40 more people max. And we sent out the invite to my, my entire tribe today. So we're probably going to sell out probably sometime later tonight or tomorrow. Um, it, I'm limited by my Zoom license. That's why there's a cap on it. I'm going to take literally what I spent the last 17 years learning and doing physically in deals with over 1400 deals. And I'm going to take the most important things and lay it out over three days. Does anybody here like shortcuts? Anybody I cool? I do. I do. Chris, you're a shortcut guy. I like shortcuts. Anybody else like shortcuts too? I know I do. Awesome. So what we'll do to shortcut for you guys is on day one, we're talking all about finding deals killer off market deals. I won't be showing anything like on market stuff. It's all killer off market methods to get deals. So okay. my, for people that don't understand that Nate, what's the difference just so they have a clear picture of what you're talking about on and off. Yeah, you're, you're right. Thanks for stopping me. So um, on market would be listed on the MLS with a real estate agent. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. But the, the challenge right now in today's market is that when something gets listed, it's not just you that sees it. It's like tens of thousands of other people in the same city as you that also see that property. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that they end up pulling the, the bid price up. Oftentimes you get into multiple offer situations. Oftentimes with, with real estate brokers in the middle, you have to pay big earnest money checks or waive your inspection period. And I'm not a fan of any of that stuff. I like to work directly with the seller. I want to be able to sit down with them one-on-one -on -one at their, their kitchen table or the dining room table and work out a deal. That way there I can really understand what their situation is. So we're going to be showing you on day one of this, how to get direct to the seller, how to work with them and not, not have to go through somebody else in the middle. Okay. Sweet. On day two of this, what we're doing is we're going into the money side of the business. So if you're curious, like how we're pulling out the lenders or how we're pulling out the, um, the private, um, these folks that come in that I call the silent partners, day two is all about that, how I'm funding my deals. That 38 unit building that I just showed you, I didn't have to inject cash into that. In fact, the day that I closed on it, I got a wire sent to me for $40,000. I had investors that wanted to fund that deal. Uh, I got a bank on it that doesn't care about my credit score. They don't care about my assets because I found a killer deal, a really, really good off-market deal. And so day one, find the deal. Day two, find the money. Day three, we tie the whole thing together and take all questions, okay? In addition to that, I'm gonna give you my lenders that are non-recourse lenders. Chris, should we talk about what non-recourse means? Yeah, please. That's okay. huge. So, so if you've ever had like a bank come to you and say like, Hey, I got to check your credit. I got to check your assets. I got to know your firstborn child's name. They don't really say that, but kind of feels that way. Um, I I'm not talking about those banks. I'm talking about banks. I'm also not talking about hard money lenders. I'm talking about a bank that they're used to doing projects, um, for people that don't want their credit at all involved with the project. They just want the lender to look at the property. And so my team has spent a lot of time. It's been a couple of years uh, building up relationships with lenders that fit that criteria. We call them non-recourse lenders. These are lenders that you could use IRA funds with. They're lenders that you don't have to put your own money into the deal. You can bring other investors' money. 
These are like the cream of the crop lenders for our world. I'm going to give you that list. You won't have to spend two years working on it. Wait. Thank you. Thank you for that one, Nate. Yeah. I'm also going to throw in um, my personal banks that I'm using. I just closed a $780,000 bank loan with one of them. Uh, Their credit unions and community banks. My assistant spent three weeks calling hundreds of credit unions in uh, small community banks. And she found the ones that said yes to it. I've got an extensive question list that she asks. She found the one that said yes. And then I got on the phone with them all and, and double check them. And so I'm going to give you that as well as part of this. Is that cool? For coming to the event? Coming to the event. I want, I want people Sweet. stacked. I want Sweet. them to have everything that they could possibly need. Sweet. And, and by the way, too, this is not like some big $2,000 like webinar course or anything like that. It's um, literally, it's less than the cost of a dinner and a hundred percent of the net proceeds go to a charity. So um, yeah, I'll talk about that in just a second too, if that's cool. Yep. Cool. Um, next part. So we talked about the agenda a little bit covered there. Um, I'm bringing some pretty cool friends. Chris, if you're open to jam any of those days, we'd always love to have you. I know you're a busy guy with your building your house, but We'd always love to have you, but we're bringing um, Chris Strickland, close 1,600 deals. Uh, Kate Whetstone, 500 virtual deals. Um, so I'm bringing some pretty powerhouse players. <clears throat> okay. How many here would like to have a copy and paste document that had exactly what to say on social media? So you could just copy it and then paste it, and then you could get sellers coming to you. Wow. Yeah. I like that too. <laughs> swipe file. That's the, that's the magic with Dan Kennedy. Always have a swipe file. Just cut and paste. The swipes. So, so I've been testing and I paid a copywriter a lot of money to like test and test and test. And now we figured out which ones actually bring the deals. And so um, you get that as well with this. Okay. Man, thank you. Okay. Good cool. Swipe files, the PDFs, you get the whole works. Okay. And, um, you get to work with, with myself, my team. And, um, the reason that I'm doing this by the way, is because that I'll tell you now it's 47 bucks. Okay. Um, it's $47 because we're raising money for a nonprofit called home invest kids. If you're curious about what the nonprofit does, uh, it's a Christian homeschool resource center. And we do these trips called fishers of men where we take fatherless boys and bring them out with godly men to, to teach them some good godly principles. Mm. Uh, we're in the, also in the process of negotiating a youth camp. So that's what the nonprofit does. I don't want to take your cash. I know Chris doesn't want to take your cash, but Chris, let me come on here and talk about this today. Um, the cash is 100% of the net proceeds will go to the nonprofit for this, this $47 ticket. And um, uh, But my ethical bribe to you is this. You come... Help us with the nonprofit, the 47 bucks, and I will go full out for three days and I will teach you this stuff. You will walk out, you will get my script. This is my, we call it our $40 million offer script. It's literally breaks down all five phases of the call. A lot of people think like, oh, it, it's gotta be easy just talking to a seller and they make the, the number one mistake. They jump into price right away. How much are you gonna pay me? I'm mm. gonna pay you 317. And they fumble the ball right there. It's over mm-hmm. before it even starts. Like, Got to redirect like, them. Yeah. Yeah. So like, right. we're going to teach you during this event. Like you actually got to build rapport with them first. Number two, you got to understand what their outcome goal is. Have they got a new place yet? How much is their mortgage balance? What's their interest rate? What's the term? of? The- we're going to walk you through that step by step. Okay. So how many of you would like that? How many would you would be like to actually go through that fate, that step by step? Anybody want to hang out with Mike on this three-day thing, step by step? That's a cool little four million dollar outline, well, offer outline. Yeah, That's and it works. Sweet. It wor- works so well. Cool. So um, you get everything. Um, additionally, addition to that, um, we do laser coaching at this event. So literally, whatever challenge in real estate you're having right now, um, you bring it to us. Let us hear about it, and then we're going to coach you right on this if you're comfortable coming on Zoom with us and talking all that kind of stuff. But I, I want to make sure that 100% of questions are answered. When I say we play full out, this whole ethical bribe of giving you, getting you to help the nonprofit, 
like we play full out. I will make sure that every single question is answered while you're at the event with us. Okay, cool. Um, I want to cover, Chris, I got one more thing to cover, but it's okay if I put the link in the chat for people. Yeah, well, if you guys, when you're ready, so might as well get signed up now. We're here in 50 minutes. We've been here. The link's in the video description. You can get signed up right now. I wouldn't wait now. He said, I think you've got the Zoom. Your your license on Zoom probably goes up to X amount of people. I'm not sure. But Nate's um, three-day cash flow intensive is in the video description. Don't think about it. It's going to be costing, what, a couple, a tank of gas to get into this thing, Nate. I appreciate you for putting this all together. I know your time is valuable, especially coming on your birthday, brother, Nate. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I, I appreciate it, man. So do we'll, you see the, the link? It's uh, floating across the screen, how Chris is describing. It's uh, Home and Best Kid. Well, you know, it'll be in the, the description for you guys. Is that for the nonprofit there? Th this will go, yeah, th this 47 bucks, it gets you your VIP ticket to come to Got the it. event and hang with us for three days and a hundred percent of the net proceeds go to the nonprofit. Absolutely. I got no, hold on. I got no, that's key. Okay. Got it. Got it, brother. Uh, actually, you know what? I put the wrong one to you in the chat. Sorry. We got it. We got it. I'll put it up here. You Sorry got the right it. one? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. It's in the, most of my, they know to go to the, the, the video description below, but we'll put it up. Yep. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And um, if you've got questions that you want to get answered, feel free, type your questions. We're going to tackle all of them. I got one more. Yeah, put the questions in, y'all. One more thing to teach, too. I promise that I teach some tax stuff, some ninja tax moves. Yeah, put it on there. Okay. Are we able to sketch on this thing? Mm. not like a whiteboard sketch no only slides okay i know a solution i know how to do it then get your questions in the chat for nate i see it's some questions here we got to get back to nate because i didn't ask any questions Jade. I, yet i was letting you go feel free i see masterminds asking one do you uh know any good refinance companies for a flip project mastermind it depends on what city and what state and um, most of the lenders that I work with, they're not flippers, so to speak. They're more, um, they, they like to do long-term long -term loans. Um, but depending on what city and state you're talking about, I might I might have a good referral for you. But long-term is harder to find. I mean, if you can find that, I would, I mean, I remember, never forget, mate, Nate, when you, I first met you, you were like, Chris, I'm in it for the long haul. You remember telling me that? I, I sort of do. Like, I, that's my <laughs> mantra. I mean, you like, I don't want nothing in short. I want, we had just met at that time. That really hit me, man. I'm like, you know what? I think I got to bite into that mantra because short, I mean, if, you, if you're looking for short, short successes and short wins, man, it just, I'm not interested. I just talked with an investor, a guy that's um, putting money into one of our projects. Um, his net worth is astronomical. He owns a whole bunch of, um, the drug and alcohol rehabilitation centers, like the big downtown ones in several mm -hmm. cities across the, the country. Mm -hmm. And his average rent per tenant per day is around 6,000 bucks. Good it's crazy Lord. high and it's paid, paid by the government. Mm -hmm. And um, him and I were chatting, he's putting money into one of our apartment buildings. And, and um, the first thing he asked me, is like, Hey, do you, are you one of those flipper guys? And I'm like, I've done them before, but no, I, right now, like I'm all long-term holds. He's like, Oh, good. He's like, you're lucky, man. If you would have said flipper, I would have been out. And I'm like, really? I'm like, why? And he's like, well, number one, uh, flips are the highest tax bracket. Number two, uh, if you're only relying on the flip, and I know that a good investor has a plan B, plan C, but he was explaining to me, he's like, if you're only relying on the flip and the market turns down and you can't rent that thing in cash flow, you're going to be in a hurt position. I'm like, yeah. yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. And he's like, number three, the tax benefits long-term are through the roof when you hold. They're yeah. way better than the, the, the one-time profit that you'll make as a flip. Yep. Like, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's the truth, man. Uh, Nate, I want to – oh, somebody had a question here. I, I know we got – yeah, one other thing that teaches – oh, Agnes wants to go oh, – how long did you hold that one you sold for 1.7, was it? Yeah, Agnes, uh, two years. So I got it for five hundred thousand dollars, and um, I got paid ten grand the day that I bought it, and then I sold it a couple years later for um, uh, one point seven million bucks. Sweet. And I ended up owning forty percent of that building. So, 
Yeah. T- TOV. Okay, well, that was the next question. How much did you have to pay the investors? So there you go. That's not free money. So go ahead, Nate. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You TOV. Right on there. Go. So, so it's not nothing's free in life. <laughs> yeah. Nothing at all. <laughs> I don't want if it's my. I don't even want if it's free. Don't keep, keep it. No. So, um, yeah, investors do want to make a return. Uh, I have one investor. He's good with six percent. You get that man six percent on his money. So, like naturally, with that investor, every time that I know he has more money, I constantly put deals in front of him, and I constantly keep his capital working for him. Uh, if I happen to like refinance or pay off a deal that his money is in, I always have a backup deal for him. I'm like, hey, you know, we're going to pay you off here, but this one's open right here. Um, and then sometimes I'll get other investors come to me, and they're like, hey, I want to make thirty percent of my money, and then I'm like. Hey, I love you, um, but I'm a very conservative guy. I don't go after the 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 giant numbers like that. I go after stuff that I know I'm going to conquer. And um, then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But so it depends on the investor is the the real answer. But I, I try to get them in between six percent and twelve percent. It's kind of the sweet spot. Depends. Devonte Washington, happy birthday, Nate. Thank you. What's the difference between this, what you're doing, and private lending? Excellent question, man. Yeah, it is. It is. And I and I apologize, Devontae. I should go into the weeds a little bit more. We got a group that's ready for that. Not all groups are, but you guys are. The Roundup crew is sharp, yep. okay? Uh, private lenders, you're taking their money as a debt and you're paying them interest each month or each year, whatever you structure with them. I don't like to take a bunch of debt on projects. Um, uh, just not, not my nature, not after going through the development fiasco that I went through. I like to take a partner on the project. So I have them come in as a partner of mine. That way they're during the period of stabilization. Like when you buy a property and it needs to be cleaned up before you put tenants in. During that period, I don't have to pay anybody anything. Like I, 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 I can coast through that period without writing any checks to the, to the investor. And then after it's stabilized, then usually my checks start to them. I'll pay them part of the monthly rent that comes in. So Sweet. I take these people as partners. Sweet. Big difference, Devante. Big difference, my brother. In, in Devante, I find it way easier to get a partner than a lender. Mm-hmm. Here, here's here, psych, psychologically, like when you're able to say, hey, come in alongside me for the investor, for whatever reason, in my experience, like I just, they gravitate towards it. They're like, oh, you're going to let me ride around the bus with you. I, I just spoke with a lady. <clears throat> She's a friend of my wife's never done real estate before. She makes pretty good money. She's got extra, extra cash. She wants to invest. And when I told her she can invest in my apartment building and that within five years, I would refinance it. I would pay her back and she'd still own a piece of the building and still keep getting dividends from it. Monthly rent checks from it. She about fell off her chair. She's like, what really? That's how that works. And she's like, I had my, my brother-in-law offer me to be a lender on his flips and that looked okay, but this sounds way better. I want to do this. They love that. It is better. Uh, let's see. Now you get your water there, brother. Let's see. Nate, y'all give Nate a thumbs up for this. Coming and working on his birthday. Let's get you out of here, man. Golly. Fione, Fione, did you do a subject two deal without, would you do a subject two deal without an attorney? That's a beautiful smile, by the way. Yeah, she's a pretty lady. Um, Fiona, um, I'm not an attorney, but, um, I'll tell you what I do in my real life. Um, I use, if it's my first transaction in estate, I always use an attorney always because I just want to get their paperwork. I want to make sure I'm not missing any disclosures, all that kind of stuff. And for the couple hours of work that I pay them for might be like 600 bucks or whatever, 800 bucks. If it's an expensive attorney, if they cover my butt on everything, it's well worth it to me. Yep. So think about it. Yeah. Don't even think about it. Oh, unicorn. Round up. Get your questions in and join Nate's three-day cash flow intensive training. It's just a couple of less than a tank of gas. That video is in the uh that links in the video description while we're getting the QA. Look at this. Somebody, Nate, happy birthday. Hampton. Oh man. Okay. Somebody my alumni there. What up? Oh, I like a white wallet. Man, so much stuff. How are you looking on time, Nate? I know it's your birthday. You got to be doing something here. No, no, no. We're, we're good. We actually have had uh, a lot of people join us. So awesome. Cool. Okay, cool. cool. We are Jay, at uh, 
136 and we cap at 150. Oh so boy. 136. <laughs> Nate, just for JB, I don't sometimes they don't see it in the in the link in the video description. What's the times again? Yeah, starts at 12 o'clock Eastern time and it'll go till about five o'clock Eastern time. Cool. If you've got more questions and whatnot, then we stick around and we'll answer the questions. But about 12 to 5 each day, Eastern somebody, time. Somebody big soda's trying to get a recommendation for an attorney in Minnesota to try to get an inside track here. Yeah, yeah. Big soda, I'll, I'll give you one because I got one and he's really good. <laughs> uh, uh, Brian Horsher. Uh, just look up Title Nexus. Title Kyle Nexus. Nexus. Tell him, tell him you spoke with with Nate and Chris. Now that is worth the price of admission here tonight. Nate, how hard is it to find an attorney to close these deals? So, so it's tough. And the way that I found Brian, it's worth telling this because I, I was closing with, um, I won't say the name, but I was closing with this little title company for all my uh, rental properties. And then I started doing flips and wholesale. And I went to her and I'm like, hey, I want to do a wholesale deal. And she looked at me, she said, Nate, that's illegal. And I'm like, I'm like, what? No, no. I, I heard from somebody else. You can do. She's like, no, no, Nate. That's illegal. You can't get into that. We don't do that kind of stuff around here. And I'm you like, really oh. did that too. I've heard that too. I just about like cried inside because like I'm like, what? No. And so I started asking other people. I'm like, hey, who in town like knows how to do this stuff? And they're like, Brian, Title Nexus. Brian. I heard it from like three people. So I'm like, I got to go meet this Brian guy. And I sit down with him, and then he sketches the whole thing out for me. Like, no, this is how it works. And Brian is good. He's legit. Title Nexus. It's an attorney that owns a title company. So you kind of get a double whammy. It's really, really good. That is so cool. So who asked that? Big Soda. Give us a thumbs up for that, man. Very rarely are you able even to get a referral from somebody that's actually used them because, you know, there's so many. Everybody's in different states. So I don't have anybody in Minnesota, but that was a blessing there, Nate. Thanks for being a blessing, brother. Absolutely. Look at that. Diane is signed up. Welcome. Welcome, Diane. And Diane's asking, is that like a double closing? So a wholesale oh. deal would be that. Yeah. And um, we'll cover that at three day event too. I'll, I'll sketch that out how we're structuring these. Cause you got to understand there's 17 different ways to structure this stuff. You guys have probably heard things like subject to, have you also heard the wrap mortgage land yeah. contract contract yeah. for deed. And so it's important for you to understand those because when you go and meet with the seller, the more that you know, the more you can serve them. Yes. There's a lot of sellers right now that need your help. Oh, a man. lot. A lot of them. They're not, they're not making out into it into the news quite yet. But um, I got a, a good friend runs a big construction company. And um, he's crushed it. The last five or six years, he's made millions of dollars every year. Uh, the last two times I bumped into him now, all in the last month, He's getting his butt kicked. And I'm, I just saw him a couple of days ago. His name's John. I'm like, John, like, how's it going, man? What's going on? He's like, Nate, you'd never believe the number of people that are defaulting on paying me, me and my team for fixing their property. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, I can't collect money. I, I go do the work and nobody wants to pay. I'm like, wow. What? What changed? He said, I don't know. He's like, literally in the last two months, it just changed. It's 180 degree different. People used mm -hmm. to pay me just fine. And now all of a sudden they stopped paying me. This is right now. Right now, right here, right now. He's literally, he's asking me if he can help promote some of the stuff that I can do. And he's thinking about shutting down his construction company. Oh my Lord. Yeah. That's rough, Nate. It's funny how real estate can, it can really change quick. You know, you don't notice it until you've been in it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so right now there's people hurting. And if you learn exactly how to structure these deals, you can serve them. You can help them. Absolutely. When Kong came to me, the seller that I showed you on that, that, that deal, he literally was at the point where he was just about to walk away from his property. He's going to let the bank take it. He didn't have any other options. He was out. Didn't want to put money into the place. He's just going to walk away and let it go into foreclosure. And so I stepped in and I handed him seven grand, which he wasn't <coughs> otherwise. And I saved him from getting a foreclosure on his property. It would have ruined his credit for at least seven years. So you can do that. You can serve people, especially during markets like this. This is the, the probably the biggest time that you'll see in the next couple of decades to mm. be able to serve sellers. Now is the time, y'all. I've been talking about that, Nate. I saw this in, two years ago. I saw it coming, man. I'm like, you know, if, you, if you've been around a block, you can kind of hindsight, you know, see how things are coming. So it's here right now. Now is the time. All right. Hit it, Nate. You got some other 
slides. Let's get you out of here, brother. Hang yeah, hey, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this. Um, this is a, a tax strategy that I want everyone to, to really know and understand. And um, it's important to understand the context on this too. I'm drawing out the letters Sarah, and I'm sorry my handwriting's not good because I'm drawing with my finger on the mouse trackpad. <laughs> I, I learned this, so um, I, I start getting ramped up. I start getting fairly good at this business. This guy comes to me and he says, hey, Nate, uh, I'm making really good money right now, but I'm getting taxed heavily. I'm looking for things to offset my taxes. And I'm like, okay, well, how can I help? He said, well, uh, if you can invest in real estate the way that you're doing it, but follow my team's input, then I want to partner with you and do a lot of deals with you. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that look like? He said, well, you're going to have to come down to my family office and uh, talk with my team and then we'll get you off to the races. And I'm like, okay, cool. I go home that night. I literally Google search family office. Didn't know what it was. Family office is a place where basically wealthy people have their money managed for them. Okay. Uh, attorney, financial planner, CPA, I call them the smart people. Okay. And so I go down with him to go meet his smart people at their family office. And they say, Hey, Nate, present what you do. And so I get up and I basically showed them what I just showed you guys. I showed them how I'm buying these properties, fixing them up and doing my thing. And and then they're like, oh yeah, yeah that, that's great. That's great. Okay. We want you to keep doing the same thing, but you also have to apply the Sarah strategy. And I'm like, okay, cool. What's the Sarah strategy? They're like, well, it works like this. And I'm like, okay. Uh, first one, S stands for secret savings account. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible with one finger. So I'm going to abbreviate secret savings account. I'm going to come back to this one because this isn't purely tax. <coughs> but I'll, I'll circle back around it. I want to get to the tax ones. Okay. Okay. The next one is accelerated depreciation. Let us know in the chat who here has heard of accelerated depreciation. Accelerated depreciation. If you haven't heard of it, just type no. If you have heard of it, type yes. Accelerated depreciation. Okay. Accelerated okay. depreciation. Roger, I'll recap that for you too. Um, Roger's asking, um, I just ran into a meeting. Can you recap what the three-day events about? Yeah, three-day events about finding off-market deals. Uh, that's all day one, literally killer off-market deals. We'll show you what we're doing on social media to bring them in like wildfire, wildfire. Day two is about finding the money for all the projects. And day three ties the whole thing together. They're half days, 12 o'clock Eastern to five o'clock Eastern. Uh, 47 bucks is the admission. 100% of the net proceeds, they go to the nonprofit that we're sponsoring called Home Invest Kits. So that's kind of the, the high level on it. And there's a description link that that's dropped down there in the description. You can- and Roger, you can always just rewind the video back. We're not gonna take this down. So you're good to go, brother. You do have another, you, you do have to join by tomorrow though, because he's only got like 12 spots left. We're at 139 right now. Cool. Okay, so accelerated depreciation is what we're talking about right now. So the smart people say, Nate, this is the first, first move you need to add to what you're doing. I'm like, okay, cool, what is that? And they said, well, Nate, every time you go get one of these properties, I'm just gonna sketch a simple house here. Let's pretend that this house is worth $100,000 for simple numbers. I know those of you in the coastal cities in California, New York, you're like, what? It's not possible, but 100,000 bucks for simple numbers. Uh, the smart people, they explained to me that this can be depreciated over 27 and a half years. And so basically, this isn't the exact math, but this will give you a good ballpark. You can take this $100,000 and divide it by 27 and a half, and it's gonna be somewhere around $3,000 per year that can be deducted. And what they explained to me is that based on their client's tax situation, this would be an immediate write-off for him. He could take his other income that he was making over here and have it offset by this depreciation over here in real estate. And I'm like, okay, cool, that sounds awesome. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, Nate, it gets better. When you go get us one of these bigger buildings like this, the government lets us depreciate these over 40 years. And um, to give you an example, a real life example, we just closed on a 78 unit building. And um, that 78 unit building per year is $500,000 of depreciation. 500K, okay? 
So, so smart, smart people, CPA, they map this out for me. They're like, so get as many as these as you can. We're going to depreciate them. And I'm like, so excited. I run straight to my CPA and I'm like, Hey, the smart people, they just told me this, like, why aren't we doing this? I need to do this for my taxes. And my CPA looks at me and says, well, Nate, you don't qualify for that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The smart people just said that, that, you know, anybody qualifies for this. Why don't I? They're like, well, Nate, you do technically qualify for it. Yes, you do. But uh, the problem is, is that when you sell the real estate, you're going to have to pay all that money back. Depreciation it, recapture. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I'm disappointed. I go back to the smart CPA and I'm like, hey, my CPA just said that I'm going to have to pay all this money back. And then he, he looks at me and he says, Nate, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you do. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what does that mean? He's like, well, Nate, we got this thing called a, you guys let me know in the chat. I know that this crew will get this. Four numbers something four digits exchange. What is that? Oh, okay. let's see. My roundup homies know that one. Exchange. There's four digits. When you sell a piece of real estate and you defer the taxes forever, what is that called? When you sell a piece of real estate and you can defer the tax forever, what's it called? Blank exchange. What is that, y'all? Yeah, the see, blank exchange. It's four digits. Yeah, that's it. Hey, look at this. There you got it, man. Woo. Yeah. Good for Don, you. you got it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good, good, good. I'm telling uh, you, man, the Benjamin round of homies it. is on the ball. Benjamin, good for you. Y'all got it, man. They got yeah, it. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. Chris, your crew is good, man. They are. This, I can't even lie. Can't we're lie. we're gonna we're gonna have fun, man. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um we're we're up to 141 right now. Lori just came in. Uh congratulations, Lori. Looking forward to working with you. Um Twyla came in, she was number 140. Congrats. Looking forward to working with you. Um, yeah, we're going to have fun. When you guys are this sharp, this lets me go really, really deep. So I get to have more fun. I won't have to hold anything back. Sweet. Okay. So smart CPA looks at me and says, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you have to pay it back. And I'm like, well, well what do I got to do? He's like, Nate, have you ever heard of a 1031 exchange? I'm like, well, yeah, I've heard of it. He's like, that's what we're going to do. If we ever sell one of these assets, we're going to do a 1031 exchange. And you can literally exchange until you die. And when you die, the tax basis is reset to zero. When you mm -hmm. hand that, that property down to your children, they get it at a zero tax basis. All the taxes that you deferred forever, they just get wiped out. Wow. I go back to my CPA and I tell my CPA that, and we ended up changing CPAs the next year. <laughs> so so I, I share this okay. with you because if, you, if your CPA was anything like mine, like you got to make sure you're working with the right CPA. So smart CPA like set, set me straight on all this. The other thing that he told me is he said, Nate, in the odds of us ever selling one of these properties is slim to none because we're going to depreciate them for all 27 or 40 years if it's commercial property. And the values on them are going to go up more than likely each year or at least over a 10 year span. And additionally, the mortgage payment is fixed. It's not going up, but rents are going up. So that means cash flow is going up. You would be crazy to sell these assets. That's what smart CPA said to me. I'm like, wow, I get it. Okay. And then they map this one out for me. Repair versus replace. <clears throat> Who here has done um, a scope of work with a contractor? Anybody here ever like looked at a scope of work or looked at the written statement of work with a contractor before? Yeah, they're intense, man. Yeah. A good one is. So smart CPA is mapping this out for me. And he says, Hey, Nate, when you're going through those scopes of work, when you're meeting with a contractor and you have the option of repairing something or replacing something, I always, always, always want you to be repairing it whenever possible. If you got to replace it, we understand, but just whenever possible, do a repair. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What's an example? He said, well, Nate, hardwood floors, you get into the place, you got the choice of ripping them out and putting in new floors, or you can sand the existing floors and stain them. If you stand them and stain them, that's a repair. We want mm. you to do more repairs. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Well, what's the benefit? What, how does that work? And he said, well, Nate, when we rent out this property the same year that the work is done, 100% of repairs are deductible this tax year. So with our client, if you've got a $50,000 scope of work on a single property and half of it is repairs, we get to take 25 grand and knock it off of our clients' taxes this year. Like, ah, oh, I get it. 
I get it. So who here, let me know in the chat, if you saw uh, Donald Trump didn't pay taxes for 10 years, something about his tax returns being out there. I saw that. Chris saw, I saw it. it. Yeah. Did you guys see it too? Who here saw that? Anybody Donald else Trump. See that thing? No taxes 10 years. So I haven't read his tax returns yet. I, I have read Joe Biden's. I have read Kamala Harris's. I'm a geek like that. I, <laughs> I jam on geeky. that. Well, here's the thing. Like these are all <laughs> policy makers, right? And um, success leaves clues. And as soon as I can get my hand on Donald Trump's tax returns, I will go through them. I will spend two, three days going through them, whatever I have to. Because they say that wow. he, he wiped out his taxes for 10 years. I bet you. I'd be willing to bet quite a bit of money on this, that he didn't do anything illegal. I bet you he just worked these two, accelerated depreciation and repair versus replace. The depreciation, he's got those huge buildings. Yeah, yep, exactly. And so mm -hmm. the, the good news is for all of us here is that these same tax loopholes, they're for you. Yeah, man. They're for me, they're for Chris, like they're for us. Just yeah. most people most people don't don't use them. And, and we should be. And so you don't have to be a person like Donald Trump and have big buildings. Like you can still do this with a single family house. You can do it with a, a four unit building and you should be doing it because that's where the real wealth is in these real estate deals. It's not just the, the fee that you make off of it. It's the long-term depreciation. It's wiping out. I can't legally, I, I shouldn't legally say wiping out because it's not the right word. What we're really doing is deferring our taxes forever. We're deferring wow. them until the day that we die. And then when we hand the property down to our kids, then they're inheriting the property at a zero tax basis. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Crazy. So <laughs> I like what, what Renee says because his people are smart. That's yeah. Right. That, that, so the, so that, that's what the smart people taught me. They taught me those two are the big ones for tax. The last one down here, I'll cover more at the event. But this is just um, the word appreciation. Those of you that maybe maybe you didn't see it earlier, I flashed a slide of what's happened to the U.S. dollar over the last 107 years. And um, the U.S. dollar has gone down almost every year, not every year, but it's gone down, 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 down. It's like worth just a fraction of what it used to be back in 1913. And it's a lot of it, it has to do with the government is printing money. They print more money and then it devalues our dollar. And so uh, the smart people were telling me how to pick properties. You got to pick properties that we're going to see good growth. They wanted to make sure rents were going to grow every single year. And so that's, we'll talk more about that at the, at the three day event, but that's what the smart people taught me. Sweet. This is the way to play real estate. Well, thanks for that little nugget there, Nate. That was a good one, man. That was a good one. Yeah, it's one of my, one of my favorites. All right, guys, we get signed up in the video description. You're going to be with Nate for three full days. Um, I get to hang out with him. Obviously, I've known him for quite a while, so it's an honor that any time that I can get the man here to talk. And let me tell you, all I don't do this stuff. I, I do these videos and, and produce this whole channel because it's what needs to be done. I'm, when, I'm not looking for fame, recognition, none of that stuff. It's the message needs to get out here. For my opinion, Nate doesn't, we don't run in the same circle. So I get to bring these type of trainers and actual practitioners to you because I realized that Nate might not be in the same, uh, the same circles that I run in. So I, I, when I go to these trainings, I get to hang out with him and bring him back to share the good word with you. And Nate, thank you, man, for sharing this stuff with us, brother. It's, it's, it's my pleasure, man. Yep. Sure. All right. Is there anything else you got to Nate or leave us with Nate? Or, uh, where are you at? But jo Josh just asked a question too. Oh, He's saying, another question. Sorry. When, no. when you got a partner, uh, how do you end up? Get it. How do you end up getting a hundred percent ownership if you want to keep the asset and not have a partner for life? If you want to end up with more cash flow, so Josh, you can Good write question. that into the deal going in. You just got to be upfront with whoever your potential partner is. Let them know, like, hey. My intention on this deal is to bring you in short term, but I'm going to cash you out probably at this mark, the five-year mark, whatever it is. And at that point, I'll pay you this, and then we'll both go our separate ways. Mm. And so you can you can work those in on deals right up front. Sweet, sweet. Just best practice, just do that stuff up front. Like if you're if you're planning to do that, just just do it up front. And then people appreciate that much more. They don't like to be surprised. Investors don't like surprises. They want to know what's going on right yeah, from the get-go. They want certainty. They want certainty. 
Yeah. Look at this deal said I helped we I helped her a little on a subject too. One owner finance. Okay, it's good. That is so cool. I'm happy to do that. That is so cool, deal. Deal Betty. Yeah. Good for you. We appreciate you, Kenny. Go ahead, Nate. Oh, I see the questions. Man, they popping in here. Okay, he got the yeah, crash out. It's a it was, is that a cash out refi dance, John Cash and uh uh Nate, Josh is asking. So Josh, let's just pretend, um, I'll give you an easy example. Um, we have a, a 38 unit building we just bought. We have a bank loan for $2 million. We have investor money of $1 million, okay? Five years from now, if I wanted to pay off the investors, then what I would do is I would go to a new bank and I would do a refinance, just what you're describing, a cash out refinance. I'd bring in a new loan, probably for around 3 million bucks. That'd be enough money to pay off all the investors and pay off the original bank loan. And then I would just have a new loan on the property. So that would be a cash out refinance. So yeah, you, you certainly could do that. Um, yeah, that's one way to do it. Other ways, if you wanted to um, pay off an investor and you couldn't get a cash out refinance is you could bring in a new investor or you could take care of it with your own cash. There's other ways that you could do it, but whatever, whatever you want to do, you can do. Sweet. All right, Nate. Anything else you want to put in here, brother? Uh, Katie's got one more. Okay, I see. okay Katie. These do, things are popping up. Slow. Go ahead, Nate. Hit it. Do you know anything about a document that can be given to the seller if they need proof that they are not on the deed any longer? You're talking about when you're taking over the property, right? On a creative finance situation? Oh, two, I guess. So, Katie... Chris has probably got another method for this. And this really depends on the state that you're operating in. And so you're going to want to make sure you seek like local legal counsel before you actually execute the deal. Um, my preference, if I were working with you, is I'd probably take you down the road of doing a wraparound mortgage. A wrap will give the seller what they need to prove that you're making payments to them every single month. That's something that they could even take to like when they're applying for a new loan they can walk into their, their new mortgage loan officer and say, hey, look, my other property, I, it's it's taken care of. Uh, this this contract right here says I'm getting a payment every month that covers the expenses. So I would do a wrap wraparound mortgage gotcha. in that case. All different ways to skin a cat on this creative finance. And, it's, uh, you know, Nate, that works. You're still taking over the debt and you're just putting in the instrument. To, I'm presuming you're just putting in the instrument to show what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and now, geez. and now some people will ask, well, Hey, will they get qualified for financing? It really depends on their lender. Mm -hmm. uh, some lenders want to see that that's a seasoned contract, meaning you made monthly payments for a certain period of time. Um, some lenders are like, yeah, that's good. Let's go. So it really depends on the lender that they're walking into. Thanks for dropping in on us, Nate. Somebody wants your CPA. Mastermind wants to know your CPA name. Happy birthday. You want to share that, Nate? I don't know, man. I'm not putting you on the spot, brother. Uh, <laughs> my, so, my, my, my CPA is a, uh, like a mid-sized one up in Minnesota. Uh, I don't know if that would do any good for anybody or not. So when Nate says mid size, I promise you, it's not a mom and pop operation here. <laughs> He's being politically correct with his words. Uh, Kenny D wants to know, how often are you raising rents, Nate? Kenny D, um, as often as it's fair and reasonable, I like to keep tenants. So it's usually every other year is when I look to raise rents. I find that when you go in year after year, it really rubs people the wrong way. But if you go every other year, then people receive it pretty well. There are exceptions to that. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. One of the buildings that we just bought, the um, rents have ran up a lot since they started printing so much money two, three years ago. Because rent have gone crazy, through the roof. And, and as have insurance costs, mortgage rates, everything else, inflation Real is running rampant. Taxes. So on that building, I'm bumping up rents. Even, even though the last guy bumped them up a year ago, I'm bumping them up again right now because I have mm. to. It's just, I got to keep up with inflation yeah. too. Uh, Josh, Chris, I got a few sub two deals in Atlanta. I want to part with you right there. Okay, cool. Yeah, just learning a lot. Send us that. Just Chris buys houses at Gmail, my friend. Josh, thank you for joining us, man, and your support. I really appreciate you. It means a lot, man. Mastermind, what percentage does the bank usually give on cash out refinances, Nate? About 75%. 75% of what it appraises for. 
Happy birthday, Nate Searoads, one of our members here. Thanks, Searoads. Nate, I got to put a baby to bed, man. Let's wrap uh, it up. You know I got love for you, man, but I got to put this baby. I can hear him you're, out there. <laughs> you're, you're, you, you go, man. Chris, it's a pleasure hanging out with you. And uh, we had 145 people enrolled right now. So five seats for people that catch replay and whatnot. I look yeah. forward to hanging with you guys on Wednesday, two days now. Nate, thank you so much. I'm telling y'all, my thing is you need to hang around people that are, well, for, just for me, well, I like to hang around guys, watch their mannerisms, the words they use, how they pronounce words, just little things, man. So the little things I picked up from Nate. and Nate, thank you, brother. All right, guys, get joined up. The link is right there in the video description. You can't miss it. Subscribe to the channel, like this content, share with anybody else that's getting started in real estate or they need to figure out how they're going to build their real estate empire. But they might have, I love how Nate says, challenged credit. Where'd you get that challenged credit thing from? <laughs> yeah. I love it. A better challenged. word would be no credit, destroyed yeah. credit, challenged. Challenged credit, yeah. That sounds political. You're, so, you're just so politically correct. All right, y'all. Much love to you. I'll see you on the next video, and I'll see you at the training, too. I'll stop by and hang out with Nate. All right, peace. Thanks, guys.